Abandoned mills and factories are found all over the southeast U.S. But, did you know many of them have a haunted history? In this video, we will take a look at four local legends from southern mill towns. I'm not going to give away the exact locations since these dilapidated sites are often quite dangerous to enter, ghosts or no ghosts, an unauthorized entry can get you a criminal trespass charge. Industrial safety standards were much lower back then. Many people, including children, met their end in these factories. This led to many having ghostly legends attached to them. Some, it is said, had curses put upon them by workers who received debilitating injuries and were denied compensation. As you may know, employees in these dangerous factories often worked for very long hours for very low pay. Management was brutal and pay was often docked over minor rules and fractions. Physical punishments even happened from time to time. Children, as young as six years old, worked in them, usually being assigned to work in dangerous cramped places where adults couldn't fit. My great-grandfather was one of these babies in the mill as a child and he often spoke of incidents he saw there to family members. These young children often suffered grievous injuries and, in some cases, died there. This may have been the origin of an encounter I heard about through a family friend, a Pentecostal preacher in South Carolina. According to what I was told, this story happened sometime in the late 1950s to early 1960s in a small town in what used to be one of the main areas for textile manufacturing. The owners had closed the old facility in question due to many issues so it had been abandoned for at least 10 years, maybe longer. One day, an adventurous and rowdy boy of about 12 years old, let's call him Joey, decided to explore a shutdown mill. Joey was well known in the town for being a troublemaker. An older kid said the place was haunted and dared him to go into it and bring something out to show everyone. He was not one to back down from a dare. Ignoring the no trespassing signs, Joey squeezed through a gap in the fence and went inside the mill through a broken window. He began to look around for some proof he could take out to show his friends. He found some old papers he could take and then decided to have some fun checking out the place. The former factory had many old nook and cranny offices and wide open areas where machines used to sit. When he was about to leave, he heard a noise coming from a series of dark rooms. This made him a bit nervous but he knew his friends loved a good practical joke and might have snuck in to scare him. He decided to confront his friends and headed down the dimly lit hallway. Joey called out to his friends, telling them to come out of their hiding places. He didn't get a response. So, he assumed he had just heard an animal scurrying about. When he turned around though, he got quite a fright. Between him and the exit was a young girl, maybe about 10 years old, wearing a dingy white work dress. Her skin was pale, almost translucent, her eyes were sunken and there appeared to be dried blood on her forehead. Joey was in speechless shock at seeing what he assumed must be the rumored ghost that haunted the factory. The girl gave him a shy smile and said, Hello. I'm Becky. What's your name? Joey stammered out his name. The ghost said, I've been here a long time and just want someone to talk to. Joey got up his nerve and asked, what happened to you? My head got caught in the gears just over there. It was so sudden, I didn't even feel it. I was told by an angel that I had to wait here for a while because I had to help someone, so that's what I've been doing ever since. Are you the one I'm supposed to help? Joey talked to her for a while and promised to come back to visit her when he could. Over the following months and years, Joey visited Becky's ghost from time to time, bringing her flowers and candy and having conversations with her. His friends never saw the ghost and would make fun of him, but he went to visit her anyway. One day when Joey had just turned 16, he went to visit Becky. When he returned, he mentioned to his younger brother that Becky told him to get right with God and, although she was leaving for a while, that she would see him again. Then she disappeared into a bright light. After this, Joey became a regular churchgoer and his rowdy behavior became a thing of the past. Sadly, soon afterwards, he was drafted and sent to Vietnam where he fell in action. His family wondered if he and Becky were reunited in heaven. Or, perhaps, Becky was an angel sent to guide Joey. 
All I know is that his name is on that wall in Washington, D.C. In another, Baby in the Mill, ghost story was one I heard from someone in Alabama. This was said to have happened in the early 1970s. Stories about the old mill being haunted had been heard for quite a few years. According to what was said to me, this was mainly done to discourage children and teens from entering the dangerous old building. However, this didn't stop them reliably. One evening, a group of teens had scored some adult beverages and went into the old mill to enjoy them in a scary location. As the secret party got well underway, they said they got quite a fright. Bits of debris began flying around the old office they were hanging out in and they heard an unearthly moaning. The debris fell into an arrow shape pointing to the wall. The moaning was clearly coming from that part of the wall. One of the boys in the group smashed into the wall with a heavy piece of lumber, hoping to reveal someone playing a prank on the party. As a hole was made in the wall, the debris moving and moaning stopped. To their shock, there were skeletal remains of a child hidden in the wall. The teens did the right thing, after hiding the evidence of their alcohol fuel party, and contacted the sheriff. State investigators were called in to recover the body and handle what was thought to be a crime scene. This investigation eventually led to a former manager at the mill, a man who was about 90 years old. He was questioned and was said to have admitted to the murder. He told detectives that he had accidentally committed the crime while punishing a boy for stealing. However, the old man wasn't ever arrested nor was a trial held since he died not long after this. I found this story a bit suspect since there wasn't anything about it in local newspaper archives or other historical materials. Of course, the story could have been buried to save the reputations of those involved. Or, more likely, it was just something parents told their kids to scare them. In our next story, I was told this tale by a paranormal investigator I know in North Carolina. Sometime in the mid-2000s, he was given the task of investigating an old mill near Charlotte that had a long reputation for being haunted. The team of investigators got permission from the current owners and entered the mill armed with cameras, audio recorders, spirit boxes and other equipment to document their findings. I think they were trying to get themselves hired to do a reality show on the paranormal. Of course, they went in at night for maximum dramatic effect. The investigators made their way through the dark, dusty rooms of the mill. They took pictures and recorded sounds and random electronics noises, but they didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Then, as they were getting close to winding their investigation for the evening, their electronics suddenly stopped working. In the dark room they were in, only illuminated by moonlight, a dark mist took shape. From the mist, a pair of, yes, you guessed it, glowing red eyes emerged. Then, there was a loud and chilling shriek. The team fled in fear from the room and then the mill. The next day, they sent some students in to retrieve their gear, not telling them all the details. The equipment was brought out without incident. However, all of their photos and video were ruined, as if by exposure to a strong magnetic field. While I have to admit a great degree of skepticism about this story, the investigator involved did seem rather spooked by the incident when discussing it later. He's either a good actor or something did happen, either a paranormal encounter or an elaborate prank. In this last story, let's consider this story from a mill located in a small town in Georgia. This one seems to have a curse with some type of protective spirit attached to it. According to the source, this happened in the early 1980s before this particular old factory was demolished to clear space for a bypass road. The factory had a bad reputation for safety with several local people being seriously injured there over the years. While no deaths were reported at the location, some had died later due to their injuries. I think people were relieved when it was shut down in the early 70s. Very late at night, the local policeman on duty had a call from a concerned citizen that someone was screaming around the location of the old factory. He drove out to investigate. Upon his arrival on the scene, he found two cars with young people standing around. Unlike many occasions when the officer had arrived on such a scene, they were glad to see him. They said that a couple had gone into the mill for some private time together but that the girl had come running out screaming a few minutes later. She was babbling something about it, attacking her boyfriend between sobs and screams. 
The officer tried to talk to the girl and, after a moment or two, got some idea where to look for her boyfriend in the mill. As best he could determine, the boy was attacked by a wild or rabid animal. He went into the building, his pistol drawn and his flashlight showing the way. Suddenly, his light dimmed and a dark mist enveloped him. He heard an ominous snorting sound close by and what he assumed was the fearful whimper of the young man. Out of the darkness he saw a large, black-furred creature with glowing red eyes emerge. He couldn't be sure what it was. He didn't want to fire his weapon since he didn't know where the boy was. He swung his heavy flashlight, one of those nightstick flashlight combos, at the eyes. To his relieved amazement, the beast snorted and backed off enough for him to see the youth lying on the dirty floor. He grabbed him up and guided him out, all the while keeping the creature at bay. When they got back to the vehicles, they noticed the young man had a lot of scratches and bite marks all over his body and his clothes were ripped up badly. The officer took him to a local emergency room where his injuries were attended to. Fortunately, they weren't serious enough to require hospitalization. It turned out that the young man was the grandson of a local factory manager that had a reputation for being cruel to employees. Some say that he was attacked by a vengeful spirit brought out by a disabled former worker who had paid to place a curse on that family. Others said it was just a wild animal. The officer didn't reveal a lot of details about the encounter on the public record, writing it off as a dog attack. But his relatives said that he told them that it wasn't typical. Since he passed on a number of years ago, the story I have come secondhand from relatives. My own investigation didn't provide any strong proof of anything abnormal. I guess it's another situation of, you had to have been there. What are your thoughts on these local legends ghost tales? Let me know in the comments.